I let my husband feel emasculated and like how I feel about it. I'm currently on maternity leave for our second child, F, due to a complicated delivery in my status as a junior associate, my firm extended my leave to 90 days, concluding next Friday. My libido has been nearly non-existent. I also had a drop of libido after our first child, 3F, was born. I've unintentionally neglected my husband, who values physical intimacy as a love language, and I haven't been receptive. My concerns intensified when my husband, Derek, suggested I become SOM instead of returning to work. While we both earn six figures, my income as a corporate lawyer surpasses his salary as an engineer. He proposed he will apply for a promotion and, by eliminating the need for daycare and a nanny and making budget adjustments, asserts he can adequately provide for our family under this new arrangement. Initially, I declined his proposal. I'm also in line for a promotion to senior associate at my job. In our eight-year relationship and four-year marriage, he understands the importance of my career to me, just as I respect his career aspirations. I emphasize that with both our anticipated promotions, we could secure a better future for our daughters. He cautioned me against rushing my decision and attempted intimacy, but I found his approach off-putting and declined even cuddling. Consequently, he spent last night in the guest room. After a challenging night with a baby, I confronted him this morning about his lack of assistance. To my surprise, I found Derek trembling and sobbing, expressing feelings of abandonment and emasculation. He referenced our diminished intimacy since our first daughter's birth and a perceived power imbalance due to my career success. He feels redundant in our family, amplifying his feelings of inadequacy. He eventually composed himself and left for work, visibly upset and distant. He barely acknowledged the breakfast I prepared and didn't kiss me goodbye. As of now, he hasn't responded to any texts or calls. I recently received a message from my mill inquiring why Derek is at her house, as he arrived with the intention of spending the night. She's concerned there might have been a dispute, as he hasn't communicated with her either. Update, April 3, 2024 Last night, I wrote a post in our slash amled asshole regarding a situation that was bothering me. Two nights ago, we had a discussion and he threw a tantrum. That night, he slept in the guest room, and yesterday he went radio silent and finally spent the night at his parents. He said nothing to me, it was my mill who told me. I was a little pissed by his attitude but also concerned if I was in the wrong. 133 FM on extended maternity leave. I am doing well, and I have an opportunity to become a senior associate at the firm where I work. My husband, 31 meters, Derek, not his real name, is an engineer. We are doing financially great, with both of us earning six figures, although my current earnings are slightly higher than his. Derek has been very supportive of my career, and while he is not an equal partner in parenting our two daughters, 3F and 12 Watts, he has been very helpful at home. Last week, he proposed that I should not return to work, my leave ends next Friday, and become a son. At first, I thought it was a joke. But he kept mentioning it, bringing up arguments such as applying for a promotion himself and saving on daycare and nanny expenses, along with other adjustments to make it financially feasible. Again, I didn't think he was serious. Two nights ago, he brought up the topic again. He also talked about traditional gender roles and how our daughters would benefit from a stay-at-home mother. I felt disgusted by his words, and when he tried to approach me, I rejected his advances and didn't let him even hug or cuddle me. That's when he went to the guest room. I couldn't sleep well that night due to attending to our infant daughter. When I went to complain yesterday morning, Derek was shaking and sobbing. He expressed that he has been feeling redundant and emasculated. He then left for work without saying much and didn't come home. This morning, he finally wrote to me, apologizing for his tantrum and promising we would talk this evening face to face, he told me not to call, and he has been brief and monosyllabic in his texts. Many comments on the original post labeled him as a massive red flag. He isn't. He has been a very supportive partner and a helpful parent. This tantrum is out of character for him. Derek is not a mama's boy. Other comments suggest that I might have neglected him. There is some truth to that. His love language is physical, but my libido has diminished since my first birth and halted during the second trimester of this last pregnancy. He has expressed some dissatisfaction, but we have compensated with other forms of intimacy. Some advice suggested that I should not quit my job, I won't. That's non-negotiable. There are suggestions that this is a mental health crisis. I think this could be the case. I certainly haven't checked on Derek seriously to see how he is doing. This could explain the meltdown but not his proposal. I am not sure if I am asking for any advice. 
I am hopeful that this evening we can at least solve the immediate problems and agree on seeking therapy. Update. OMG, OMG, OMG. Those of you who commented that Derek might have been influenced by red pill ideology, you were spot on. Last night he had a talk with his parents. This afternoon, my Phil called me to check on me and give me a heads up on what they discussed. Phil recognized some talking points from Manosphere videos and asked Derek directly what kind of content he had been consuming lately. He scolded Derek for the absurdity of wanting to be a manly man and running to his parents' house for what was essentially a tantrum. I would have paid to see that, anyhow, it was unacceptable that he wasn't home with his wife and kids. For context, my in-laws, 62 meters, 58 F, were a traditional family. Phil worked in the trades, Mill was a secretary but became a housewife when my Sil was born. Mill volunteered at church and in the community and had many side businesses. They encouraged Sil to seek a career and taught Derek to seek an equal partner in his relationships. I had no problem fitting in with the family as I was what they expected for their son. Anyhow, Derek finally came home early in the evening, very apologetic, and claiming to have been misguided by certain content. I could sense that he wasn't genuinely remorseful and sincere. I decided not to confront him but rather ask him how he really felt and how neglected he truly felt. Even if the specific ideas about a trad wife came from red pill videos, he might have been influenced by being vulnerable. I opened that door, and he tried to follow it, but I realized he wasn't sincere. I mean, he does have issues, but he isn't just a victim of those circumstances. Some of you suggested that I might have prevented Derek from taking a more active role in running our home. We agreed that we should both go to therapy to address our individual issues and seek couples therapy to keep our marriage afloat. Derek also promised no more tantrums, and we agreed I would return to work when the leave is over. I am cautiously optimistic that this will work. I think Derek is sincere in his compromises, but he is not sincere in his remorse. This could go either way. For now, he will stay home. Not much of an update, as there have been no recent developments. We are trying to return to the normalcy we used to enjoy. I will address some questions and comments. Some have accused me of dismissing Derek's concerns and referring to them as a tantrum. In reality, it was Derek who used that term in his text apology yesterday morning. I simply continue to use it, even though I know better. I was asked if he is still consuming those podcasts. Short of confiscating his phone, which I can't do, it's too soon to confirm a change in his habits. I haven't caught him watching those videos, but it's not something I had noticed before. Regarding red flags, up until recently, Derek was an ideal husband. I don't know when he changed. I was dealing with my own postpartum issues and couldn't tell if he had changed or if I was overreacting. So yes, he has exhibited red flags lately, but he hasn't always been this way. Some have suggested that Derek might be cheating. While I don't think that's the issue, I can't be certain. A couple of months ago, I would have sworn that was impossible. However, it's not my main hypothesis. A few of you have suggested that having a stay-at-home parent, specifically the mother, is beneficial for our children and that I shouldn't reject that idea so vehemently. Both Derek's job and mine allow us to work from home a great deal of the time, and we are financially able to hire a permanent daytime nanny or secure good daycare. My promotion will reduce some of my home office time, but I could still be home for nearly two weekdays. Derek's potential promotion would require full-time office hours. The first time he mentioned that possibility, he was against taking it because his salary increase wouldn't compensate for his time away from the girls. That's one of the reasons I was so dismissive when he first proposed that I quit my job and he take the promotion, as it contradicted what he had expressed before.